So the unanswered question in the prostate cancer field is, how do we enrich for uh, patients responding to PD-1 inhibitors? We've seen now with a number of PD-1 agents that we're, the response rates are in the 5 to 10% range for objective response and in the 10 to 15% range for PSA response. So although this is encouraging and it tells us that some patients do benefit often for a very long time, the vast majority of unselected patients will not benefit. So I, I don't think it's possible to continue uh, doing trials with biomarker unselected patients. So wh what clues do we have already? Well, one is uh, the FDA approval of pembrolizumab for mismatch repair deficient or MSI high cancers of all type. So prostate cancers also do have the MSI high signature or the MMR deficiency signature. Unfortunately, this is quite rare in prostate cancer. Only approximately two to 5% of prostate cancers have mismatch repair deficiency. Now, these patients, when you can identify them, will have a very favorable response to PD-1 inhibitors. Approximately 50%, maybe up to 60% will respond to these therapies. So that's one genomically selected population that could enrich uh, for response. Uh, the second are patients that have a, a CDK12 mutation. This is a relatively novel uh, finding. Um, there's a gene that we used to not pay attention to, uh, which is called CDK12. And it turns out that prostate cancers that have mutations that inactivate this gene may also be more sensitive to immunotherapies, including uh, PD-1 inhibitors. The prevalence of CDK12 gene mutations is about 5 to 7%. So that's a, potentially a second category that could enrich for uh, PD-1 sensitivity. The third class of mutations are the BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations. These are the so-called homologous recombination genes. So in the past, we used to think of these genes as predicting sensitivity to PARP inhibitors, like Olaparib, but recent data seems to suggest that at least some of those patients may also be very sensitive to PD-1 inhibitors, including pembrolizumab. So perhaps the homologous recombination deficiency gene mutations, specifically BRCA2 and BRCA1, um, may also sensitize for PD-1 inhibitors in prostate cancer. And finally, um, the fourth category is um, there's a small subset of patients uh, with prostate cancer, about 6%, um, who have a high tumor mutational burden. This means that their cancer genome has a higher rate of mutations than other uh, prostate cancers. And this can be defined as the number of mutations per megabase of DNA. So one conventional definition is if there are more than 10 mutations per one megabase of DNA, this is called a high tumor mutational burden, also known as high TMB. And it, it seems to suggest that patients that have a high TMB, um, perhaps less than 10, uh, excuse me, greater than 10 uh, mutations per megabase may also respond more favorably to uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors.